yay long time no see again now neural amp modeler in case you still don't know and you have been living under a rock um, I hope you know Neural DSP or Tonex or Helix or Amplitude. So these are all these commercial uh, amp sims that everyone is using when they are recording their their uh, guitars at home. Um, Neural Amp Modeler is uh, free and open source, and people have been testing it. It is objectively at least as good. I'm not saying that it's better than any of those commercial ones. Uh, but it is very, very good, and you definitely should use it. Now, the thing about uh, free and open source software is that you can get those on Linux as well, and once something is uh, made free, there will be a lot of different variants and options and things like that, and I want to show some of those that we have now in Linux environment. So, let's start with Kitarix. So, um, let me show first what kind of setup I have here. So I have actually s uh, set uh, five different ways of using NAMS here side by side. So I have the Guitarix amp here. Then I have uh, the, I think this is the, the actual concept plugin, the Windows VST for the Neural Modeler. Then I have a Neural Modeler for the uh, Linux version created, and then I also, also have the NAM Universal, and I also have Ratatouille, that is also one variant that can load NAM profiles. And um, uh, just to be fair with all of these, I have disabled the gate from everything that I have been able to disable it, and uh, I also have not loaded impulse response on any of those, but I'm actually having a impulse response loader after all of these just so that we can get the exact same sound. And I have also loaded the exact same NAM profile for each of these, and I can just apply and have them uh, enabled one by one. So, Kitarix, it has been around for a long time, and uh, yeah, if we just take a look how I have it here, so there is a, a, a neural section here, and I have just dragged and dropped the NAM there, so I already had it there, and I have loaded Helga B6545 plus a red channel MXR drive version 2 capture, which is one of my favorite captures. So as you can see here, uh, so my guitar input goes to gate, then it goes to guitarix, so this is guitarix, here I have the NAM loaded, and then it goes to impulse response that I have loaded on another software, and this is now enabled, and this is how it sounds. So, then we can just, you know, disable that one and move to the next one. So, now I wish you to hear nothing. Yeah, maybe some bleeding there, but nothing else. Um, let's go for the first NAM. So, the first NAM is uh, the Linux native version that's created by Mike Oliphant. We can see that from the GitHub page here. So, Neural Amp Modeler LV2. LV2 is kind of like a VST for Linux. It's a Linux native plugin format. And this one just wraps the actual Neural Amp Modeler core into uh, something that we can use natively in Linux. Uh, the UI that I have here is created by a, another guy. And so, you can just, you know, add the UI if you like. You really don't even need to. But I just added it for, you know, for the looks. And... Uh, now that it's enabled, exactly the same sound. So how about we compare a bit? Let's put the uh, guitarix there and uh, disable that. So, two completely different applications doing exactly the same sound. That's just how NAM works. You can load the profile on anything that supports loading that profile. Now, let's move to the next one. And the next one is Ratatouille. And um, so, this can load also other profiles, uh, other things than NAM ones. So, this can load, um, 
I believe it's Ida X. Let's see here. Yeah, Ida X and JSON files. I'm not really sure what the JSON files are uh, in this context, but Ida X is another way of uh, um, doing these neural network based profiling things, um, similar to what NAM is. So the Cool things about Ratatouille is that you can obviously load a NAM model, but you can actually load two of those and you can blend them together or mix them together. And you can also, it also has an impulse response loader. So you can also load an impulse response here. So then you don't, don't need to have a separate impulse response loader. It also has here something that you can do for the phasing and buffering. I'm not really sure why, but yeah, it just has these kind of options. So obviously there can be a lot built around the actual NAM core. For instance, in this one, there's actually two different NAM cores because it loads two different profiles and then it just blends those two, thi two different things together. And uh, again, it should sound pretty much the same. Yeah. Next, we have uh, something that uh, is probably a little bit unexpected, but we have the actual original neural amp modeler and how can we have this oh this is a windows vst plugin uh, so now comes a little bit of magic that you need to know so there's something called yaw bridge that allows loading windows vsts like they would be linux vsts and um I'm going to make a separate video how to use and install this and so on, but just know that it's possible. Not all Windows VSTs work with this, but uh, and they aren't even working in all of the contexts. So, uh, for instance, this looks a little bit bad that you know some plugins may cause Ardor to freeze or crash. Um, that doesn't sound good. I would avoid such plugins that use this kind of framework. Um, unless I really, really, really need to use that plugin. Um, but that said, there's a lot of options for NAM, so you really don't need to use. Okay, but in here I have, um, so I have disabled the noise gate here, and I have loaded the same profile again. I don't have an impulse response because I had the other impulse response loader there at the end. And uh, this is how the OG plugin sounds. <laughs> Exactly the same as all the other ones as well. So no, nothing weird there. Well, obviously the concept plugin has few nice things here. Like it has the noise gate. It has also EQ, so you can apply some bass, middle, and treble here for the single. But it also has things that it can calibrate the input and normalize the output. So these are kind of like these new features that Steven has been adding, adding there. And uh, I don't think that these are on the other versions. Um, but also one thing that is kind of annoying about this one is that it doesn't support loading stereo impulse responses, even if they would be used just as mono. I think it should support them because all of my impulse responses are actually stereo. So if I try to load um, like the guitar hack original between, uh, we get a uh, fail to load the input response file because it's a uh, file is not mono, which is kind of annoying. I would like to be able to use my stereo ERs also here. Um, yeah, so that's the OG plugin, and then we have also something something cool that is built by Wavemind, which is the NAM Universal. So also this one works exactly the same way as the uh, OG plugin. Um, the you can get this from the baymind.net and just download it's a free uh, plugin that you can get and uh, it installed fine no problems whatsoever when i installed it uh, everything worked perfectly but the ui that we have here is glitchy so again i have loaded the helga b model here and i don't have any input responses now this also has another nam instance here that you can use for a pedal and it also has something like instigator i don't know what this does you know it just changes the sound a little bit and aggravator that comes after the amp so this is just some again some candy that is added around the nam 
uh, NAM loader there. Um, but yeah, this also sounds or should sound pretty much the same. And it does. But also this has a little bit, you know, other things here as said. It has this, these things. And um, uh, the thing about the UI that I mentioned is if I would change, for instance, uh, let's add a little bit tightness here. Uh, you can see that the value rises, but the actual knob doesn't turn. So if I put like that, it actually does affect the sound. Oh, it's not on, so I need to put it on like that. And again, you know, you don't see that it's on because the UI doesn't update. Yeah, so it has UI problems, and I know that it will update if I resize this, or at least if I... Let's try to resize it a bit. Let's see if the tightness and power becomes visible. I was able to make it visible at some point when I was just resizing it. Let's do it like that, and back like that. Okay, now we have. Now we have the power on there, and also the tightness is now set, so... Uh, UI issues, bad, um, but <laughs> otherwise it, it works. Um, I wouldn't use it honestly under Linux because of these issues, but also because if you take a look at here, the DSP load, or also here, so the DSP load is now almost 20% when I have the NAM universal loaded. Now, if I, if I unload it, it drops to 4%. So... Again, NAM Universal from 4 to 20, uh, if I put that on. Now let's compare this to the Linux native ver version. If I put that on, we go to 9%. So it is way better performance to use the Linux native if you only need the NAM profiler and nothing else. So it's better performance to use Linux native things. Let's also check the Ratatouille. 9, probably 10, 9, 10. Uh, probably would be more if I would be loading more profiles, obviously. But uh, again, if you just need one profile to run the NAM, that's enough. Then the OG plugin. Let's close that one. So with the OG plugin, we also get around 20% of load. Um, so also, it's uh, quite heavy compared to the native versions. So, what I would recommend from all of these would actually be the Ratatouille, and the reason for recommending this one uh, is that this also has resampling, which is missing still from the Mike Oliphant's version of the NAM. So, this Mike Oliphant's version requires that you run your uh, system in 48 kilohertz mode, um, but Ratatouille actually has resampling if you are using different uh, sample rate. Uh, it doesn't. Uh, it, it will then be able to handle that correctly. So I would, for for that reason, I would recommend using the Ratatouille. Um, I personally still use the NAM, this one because it's the most simple one and it does exactly what I need. So I don't need any nice candy there around it, because I want to handle that myself, you know. But uh, if I would go away from 48 kilohertz, or if I would start using NAM models that are captured using, let's say, like a hypersystem models with 98 kilohertz or something like that, then I would need to change into something else. And I would probably change to use the Ratatouille. So that's about NAM. Hopefully there was a lot of interesting content here. Stay tuned, next I'm going to probably do a video about how to install the Yopridge and use Windows VSTs in Linux. And I'm planning to try Neural DSP because I know that there's a trial version of that that I can get. And I've also heard that it works in Linux, so yeah, why not try that then? Anyway, see you in the next video.